Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and it's been a while since I've done my last movie review, and that's indeed the original Top Gun, an awesome flight classic with Tom Cruise as Madrick, yeah, Lieutenant Pete Mitchell, <laughs> who's on the cockpit, ready for the need for speed. Okay. Um, and before we get to that, with the latest sequel, well, I'm wearing my brand new Copa Kai t-shirt that I got at JCPenney. To show you right here, it says, Strike First, Strike Hard, No Mercy. You can see the Cobra logo right there with the word Cobra Kai. Yep. Based on the TV show that's currently on Netflix um, and it's also available on physical media from Sony yeah even though in North America they're just releasing the DVDs while overseas gets the Blu-rays I wish they get the Blu-rays here too even the 4K's will be perfect as well since they're meant for that and of course all based on the Karate Kid movies you know with Rob Macchio as Daniel LaRusso Daniel son and Nobuyuki Pat Morita as Mr. Miyagi, the handyman at the apartment in Reseda, California. Which at this rate, um, this is where he's a new kid in town, only getting picked on by a local bully named Johnny Lawrence, played by William Zapka, who of course um, has a karate um, instructor, John Kreese. Uh, played by Martin Cove, who runs Cobra Kai. Because unfortunately, Johnny's been picking on Daniel ever since uh, he met this beautiful girl, played by Elizabeth Shue. Yeah. And that led to all that. And then he finally gets to fight back, only he has to be in training with Mr. Miyagi by, you know, doing all these chores, you know, wax on, wax off. And clean all these cars, take care of things, and that suddenly becomes a technique movement for karate. And soon uh, they develop a relationship together, almost like father and son. I mean, considering that you know he had a father, but passed away, as we learn, and then he had a mom, who of course took Daniel. From New York to to Reseda because she had a job. He didn't like it at first because the way things are going. You know, he misses his friends over there. You know, we all felt that way. Still a very touching drama. And it works. And it became a franchise. We had the sequel where he went to Okinawa. We got to meet a beautiful girl there, and then we got to meet uh, another fighter named Chosen. And, all. and then now we know how this is going to connect to. And then the third one came, and, and so on. Like, it's going back to what the first film was, indeed. I mean, that's where we got that new trainer, uh, Terry Silver, and, uh, Thomas Ann Griffin. Yeah, and then later we got Hillary Swank replacing him as the new Karate Kid. Yeah, the next one. So basically, that TV series is focusing on the past events that occurred, but now we're going for something new. And we learned that Daniel has a family, has a daughter named Samantha, played by Mary Mouser, and then we had everything going around I mean Johnny's still around now he's becoming more badass than ever so he's no longer a bully even though they they claim that Daniel's a real bully which I know he's not no way and then we get introduced to other kids around and now they're joining in to fight back against Cobra Kai which I know John is very desperate I mean he really wanted more to train and and there we go so it's it's a big series and it's going pretty strong 
ever since it premiered on YouTube Red, which would soon become YouTube Premium. Yeah, that was YouTube's uh, streaming platform that they were coming up with. It premiered on my birthday, interesting enough, uh, May 2nd, 2018. Still going strong after all these years. Yeah. And we're getting ready for season six. Awesome. Yeah, and I know I heard the no news recently about uh, Mary Mouser, the actress who played Samantha, just got type 1 diabetes. Well, very devastating. And I know there have been a few um, cast members who passed away recently. I mean, probably the ones that we remembered from the original films. And it's just really sad. But they always will be remembered by. And I hope Mary will will try to fight hard with diabetes and everything. I, I hope everything will be all right for her and she'll continue. It's not going to be easy, but we'll see. And hopefully it'll stay. Hopefully we'll get a few more and then unless we find out what's going to be the last one and then we finally get the complete service for sure. So, really love it so far. Anyway, um, but I'm really happy that it's going so well because this pretty much shows that you got to start respecting nostalgia in, in a great way. Something that came out way back should be new again. And I'm glad that they're pushing for it because these days when they try to bring back something like this, they always failed. I mean, we're, we're getting a lot of reboots these days. We just recently got Night Courts, for crying out loud. That's on Peacock and NBC, and with John Larroquette reprising his role. But I know the show is not going to be the same without Bull and and anybody else. I mean, since half of half of the people have passed away, but we still have Marsha Walsfield and and Richard Mall, so they're still with us. But. Who knows how this show is going to become because this is why I don't like it when they mess things up. And I know we just got that 90s show that's on Netflix and I want to check that out too because I love that 70s show. Awesome series. Just recently got the DVD. I know there's a Blu-ray but maybe I'll take it someday. Um, but it's always an awesome show you know, with the rest of the cast, you know, living their times in the 70s. You know, friends, relatives and all that and they we get to have fun, do all these crazy stuff at the time. Yeah, it's, it's such a memorable show, and it really shows how it could be an impact. Okay, well, with that aside, because now I'm actually going to review a movie, and it also is based on nostalgia in a way, too, <laughs> for the classic 1986 original Top Gun, the movie that made Tom Cruise a huge star in Hollywood spanning decades of his entire career and it's going very strong even as of today so now I'm finally gonna be reviewing even with the iconic line are you ready for need the need for speed again <laughs> well here we go strap in on your cockpit of the F-14 a Tomcat or any other you know jet aviator planes around that we got and get ready to soar into new heights up in the sky for Top Gun Maverick the brand new eagerly awaited sequel that we've been waiting for over 36 years at this rate 30 years I guess, or whatever. <laughs> so Tom Cruise finally reprises his role as Lieutenant Pete Mitchell, a.k.a. Madrick, who's this time he's going to become the new instructor of Top Gun. You know, be able to teach all the students around to go on cockpits of all these uh, jet aviation planes, you know, flying around in the sky, you know, practicing, doing all these aerial 
stunts and moves, twists and turns, and you know, ride around through the mountains, and of course, you know, attacking the enemy, you know, targeting them for sure, and have a wonderful time until they get ready for it, getting prepared for themselves uh, for the next uh, army going around. Yes, and that's what they're trained for. <laughs> and well, I waited this long to finally see this movie in theaters. The first time I saw I saw a trailer for this movie way back in 2019. Uh, this was at the time in the summer when I was at YMCA doing some exercise, plenty of that. And I was just listening to music on my phone, and I actually watched the trailer. Yes, I watched it from my phone, but I later watched the trailer at home. And I was so amazed. And it was very stunning, very strong, and breathtaking having to see Tom Cruise back again on the cockpit of the F-14A Tomcat. And wow, i never seen anything like it. We get to see an actual, you know, wide-angle close-up of Tom Cruise strapping in that we never seen before. Okay, because I know in the original movie, we only show the close-ups of them through all the aerial angles that they got inside the entire jets. Because... Now we got a director who did Tron Legacy, and he also did the movie with Tom Cruise called Oblivion, where he gets to shoot with multiple cameras, at this rate four cameras, on each side of the actor's face while wearing the helmet of their names, their call names of each of them, you know, wearing the mask and all, and, and they're riding on to the jets, you know, firing and and also speeding up and making all these moves and all that. Yes, you get to see multiple angles on them. And it just makes it more beautiful and breathtaking. And all the soaring that you get to see. You never see anything like that. It was, I was like, wow. I can't believe it. It was actually done by, you're going to love this, with a certified from IMAX because they want to shoot this in the IMAX format Sony Venus 6K full frame cameras which they had to spend more than a year with the Navy because they had to approve this to show the inside of the cockpit using four cameras on each side to actually show those multiple close-ups and they want the audience to feel the offensity strain speed and gravitational force as he quoted and that's exactly what we've been waiting for now this is of course the brand new 4k that i just picked up at best buy uh, during black friday and yes i mean this is just it's really cool for this cover art that they chose i mean considering that he was almost 60 when he did this role and it says Go behind the scenes over 80 minutes of bonus features. Yes, and it's only on 4K right here. Uh, oh, it's on Blu-ray too, by the way. <laughs> but there's no uh, Blu-ray included on this release, but it does have a digital code. Um, I don't know why Paramount does this, because I wish they just use a combo pack, even for a new movie like this. I mean, you could put both together and you'll have an excellent release, whatever you want to see it on. Because the Blu-ray is just as excellent as the 4K, but the 4K will be a more significant. They're filled with HDR in a high dynamic range altogether, and also you get to watch it on Dolby Vision too. So you'll get the much clearer image, even with the darker. You know, they, they all come in different tones here. Yes, and we're already seeing the with all these uh, critical quotes here, they're saying that it's one of the greatest uh, movies ever made. And it even has the quote on the bottom. 
absolutely terrific in every conceivable way. Yeah, I put this on top of my best list uh, last year, and of course, quoted the best sequel of 2022, and rightly so. I know this movie was supposed to come out in 2020 exactly as it was scheduled although it was supposed to come out I guess in 2019 because it's been in full development um, ever since uh, 2010 I mean Cruz himself wasn't so sure if he wanted to be able to do one out of, out of all the Mission Apostle sequels he's been doing and all these other films he's been going for well it had to take some time because with all the successes he's been getting It'll be enough for him to finally get to do the sequel he's been waiting for. So, unfortunately, he needed to find a writer. He needed to find um, the director, which was Tony Scott at the time, before he passed away in, in 2012. That sucks. Yeah, I mean, he died from, like, committing suicide. So, they had no other choice but to get Joseph Krasinski. Yeah, from Tron Legacy, because he did work with Cruz before, so this would be perfect for him to finally direct a Top Gun movie that we've been expecting. Even though originally they shot this in May of 2018, all the way through April 2019, they were going to originally schedule for the summer release of July 12, which that could have been the perfect release for it, which is at the time when... When Toy Story 4 came out, and other movies too, uh, during that summer, and of course, I was at YMCA. Well, because of the uh, action sequences that they had to fix, because something went wrong, and they wanted to get it right and more improving, uh, they had to postpone it as scheduled to be released next summer, which was going to be in 2020. Well, of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic that was going around, and we had to wait this long because they had to delay this film to any specific date they had to choose to see if they'd be ready for it. And they were going to release it in 2021, but somehow they still weren't ready. So now it's 2022 for May 27th, so now they finally got the release just in time for Memorial Day weekend. Because they just had a screening on April 28th, uh, 2022, at CinemaCon. And everyone was just applauded. They, they were amazed. They had a wonderful time over there. It was incredible. So now people will finally get a chance to see the movie themselves. And they had a lot of screenings everywhere before they're getting ready to finally see it for the entire audience like myself and I had to see that movie that summer I mean on the day where we had to do other things and this was like after um, the 4th of July weekend so I saw the movie and I had a wonderful time it was very breathtaking never seen anything like it so, okay, uh, on this set right here on the back, <laughs> uh, it has, of course, the 4K with the uh, HDR high dynamic range. And I'm sure you can watch this on Dolby Vision 2 and all these other kinds. So you get a much sharper, clearer image. It's all shot digitally, too. And it will go as strong as ever. And you get to see the IMAX scenes, you know, full frame. And then it'll cut back to being in scope for the rest of the picture. So no matter which way you see it, that's how they're going to keep it. Because that's how they presented it over there in feeders. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I had a great time seeing this movie in feeders too. I, although I didn't see it on, on the IMAX, but I saw the movie at the Cinemark <laughs> in the... Uh, Lancaster. But it was great to see this on the big screen with gorgeous sound and all and and then and it's really nice to go for new heights and now we get to have new characters to follow that we 
never thought we'd be able to see, you know, even after all these years. So, of course, we got Jennifer Connelly. She's always been a beautiful actress, and rightly so. It's hard to believe because she came a long way from Labyrinth, or at this rate, Phenomena, or any other movie. But it was always been uh, Labyrinth for me. Um, and then we also got um, we got Bell Kilmer reprising his role as Iceman, Bazinski, yeah, Tom. But we also got uh, Miles Teller, which almost seems like a resemblance to his best pal, um, which is of course Goose, who's played by Anthony Edwards and happens to be the son. But we also got uh, John Hamm, uh, Glenn Powell, who just uh, recently was in the movie uh, The Dark Knight Rises and Expendables Free. Yeah, that's the one who had all these gadgets. That's the guy. <laughs> yeah. And I know he's recently in a movie called Divorcion, which is another uh, uh, aviation film. Wow, hard to believe. Doing two films at the same on the same year. Uh, we even got uh, Monica Barbaro. Uh, she was from the the show Unreal and The Good Cop. And then we got um, we got Ed Harris in the film. Yes, Ed Harris, who actually had been in a film with Tom Cruise before, called The Firm. That's interesting to see both of them after all these years. And um, we got Danny Ramirez, Jay Elias, um, Louis Pullman, and um, wow, we got so many um, new actors to join, and it's really cool. So, can't wait, because they're going to probably end up doing even more films uh, in the future. Let's hope so. Okay, <laughs> I know, I'm talking as much as I could. And we got over 80 minutes of bonus features. I know I wish they were more detailed here, but it just says go deeper to the making of Top Gun Maverick for incredible real life stunts, pilot training, and more. But I guess that's just the way they have to go for us, so you got to find out for yourself. Uh, but you can find that out on Blu ray.com. They'll give you a listing exactly what's included. There's other websites that tell you that. I mean, if you watch the if you get this, you'll be able to find out. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, the digital code. I already used it. But on the back, you do get to see all the other titles that's available in Paramount. Yeah, with the Mission Impossible um, 6 movie collection, there will be 7. Because the latest Mission Impossible sequel is coming out. Dead Reckoning Part 1, and then there'll be Part 2. That might be the last, who knows? Yeah, of course, we got the original, and then we got Days of Thunder, and Jack Reacher, uh, one of the Jack Reacher sequels. Yeah, we're getting plenty. <laughs> um, I hope I can start getting more titles of all the Tom Cruise films someday. I know there are other ones I don't have uh, at the moment. I mean, I know I had DVDs and in Blu-rays, but I hope I can get plenty uh, later. And uh, of course, here's the uh, the disc right here. Yes, <laughs> on black. Okay. So uh, since I'm taking way too long, <laughs> let's begin. Stars Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer, Miles Teller, Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, Glenn Powell, Louis Pullman, Ed Harris, Monica Barbaro, Charles Purnell, Jay Elias, Daniel Ramirez, Greg Tarzan Davis, Bashir Salahuddin, Manny Jacinto, Raymond Lee, Jake Pinkin, Jack Schumacher, Cara Wayne, Melana Ray, Jean Louisa Kelly, yes, 
You may remember her from Uncle Buck. I never thought I'd see her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she looks quite different now than she was back then. Uh, James Haney, Cheeto uh, Nakawasha, and Chelsea Harris. And there is some archive footages of from the original movie with Anthony Edwards, Meg Ryan, as well as Aaron and Adam Weiss, uh, both of them that played uh, the son. And we also got Kelly McGillis. But unfortunately, they did not reprise their roles. Well, we already know about Edwards, his character, Goose. And Kelly decided not to be in this movie right away because, well, she had to move on with her career. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, she'll still remember it. And Meg Ryan, of course, had to move on as well. Um, because, well, she had to do other things, too. Also, got to mention that the original story was actually written by Peter Craig and Justin Marks. Yes, Aaron Kruger, who has wrote a lot of screenplays for several movies, including Transformers. But he also had wrote The Wing, and he even wrote Arlington Road. Yes, uh, the movie with um, Jeff Bridges and Tim Robbins. Well, of course, Tim Robbins was also in the original Top Gun. But also, Tim Robbins was in War of the Worlds remake with uh, Cruz. Go figure. Eric Warren Singer and Christopher McQuarrie, of course, who wrote uh, The Usual Suspects, but also had teamed up with Cruz. With the Mission Impossible movies, he even directed some. And it's directed by Joseph Kuzinski. Uh, as you may remember, he did Tron Legacy and he also gave us Oblivion with Tom Cruise. And of course, the movie is indeed based on the characters by Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. And produced by Jerry Bruckheimer which I know he has his production company to join in under the name of Don Simpson. And then, of course, we got Sky Dance and, and indeed, Tom Cruise's production company, which he used to have Cruise and Wagner, yeah, when, she, when he was working with Polo Wagner. So now he has his own production company called TC Productions. <laughs> so now we know. Now, all you Cruise fans out there, along with uh, 80s and, this, and 90s nostalgia fans, for sure, I mean, we love everything, not to mention the original Top Gun fans, too, movie buffs, film enthusiasts, who've seen the movie already, maybe countless of times, especially in theaters, whatever format you choose, like IMAX, uh, Adobe Cinema, Prime or XD or or any of the strong presentations that they occurred and as well as uh, watching it on physical media like 4k blu-ray DVD and digital media streaming like the digital codes that you got from your physical media they put on to any provider like voodoo uh, or any other um, well, not movies anywhere, though, unfortunately. Yeah, because they don't accept Paramount titles. However, they also have it on Paramount+. Plus. They also have it on MGM+, Plus. that's new, which used to be known as Epic. And um, any other <laughs> provider you have. Yeah, and also Showtime would play it, I believe. Um, any other <laughs> that you can think of. Yes, um, you already know the film by heart. You've seen it at all, for sure. But there are people out there who haven't seen the movie either. Okay? Cause since it is already the highest grossing picture ever, and indeed became the most quintessential sequel ever made since Terminator 2, Judgment Day, for sure. Uh, <laughs> or any other sequel out there. There's going to be spoilers, so keep that in mind, folks. 
watch the movie before you watch my review because then you're going to be attacked for sure. It's a target warning, folks. So letting you know. But don't worry, nothing's going to happen to you. <laughs> Let's hope not. Okay, here we go. The movie begins set more than 30 years ago after he graduated from Top Gun. U.S. Navy Captain, News Lieutenant, Pete Mitchell, nicknamed Madrick, played by T Tom Cruise, who's pushing 60 at this moment, going strong, cocky, dangerous, but no doubt about it, an awesome guy, is still a test pilot. And despite the many achievements that occurred over the past couple decades, he has been repeated in subordination that had kept him from a flag rank. So that's where his friend and former Top Gun rival, who's now Amaral, Tom Krasinski, known as Iceman, played by Bell Kimber, is the commander of the Pacific Fleet, who often protects Maverick from getting into bigger trouble and a lot of causes that he's been doing lately. Because, let's face it, he's dangerous. <laughs> but you love him. So meanwhile, real Amberl Jester Kane, known as Hammer, played by Ed Harris, had planned to cancel Maverick's hypersonic Dark Star scramjet program in favor of funding drones around, you know, just for everyone around to use. But to save the program, Maverick unlaterally changed the target speed for the day's test of the Mach 9 to the final contract specifications of the Mach 10. Yes, this is this incredible, stellar, digitalized uh, jet aviation plane where he's going to speed up, break the sound barrier, going up to over 10 miles per hour up in the sky, even more too, to speed up all the way straight for it. And he's really having the best time of his life. I mean, he was really soaring into new heights for sure. <laughs> but also getting into bigger trouble once more. Because at that point on, <laughs> when he was on there, I mean, this was incredible. It was amazing that he can do this. And then suddenly he went out of control and somehow ends up landing all the way straight down into the desert, which cuts to a blackout. Now at first you thought, oh boy, here we go again. Now we're going to go for a flashback. Like the whole film's going to be one particular flashback after another, which I know it's going to lead to that too. Like we thought, oh, he died now. And we're going to remember his, his honor. Oh, thank goodness that didn't happen. Because this was a miracle. He had a very wild, miraculous landing, but did crash indeed the prototype. And ends up at a local diner. You basically see Maverick all covered up in dirt. Uh, his hair is all going pretty wild. Uh, his entire jacket is torn <laughs> and the entire patrons everyone around the waitresses and all are just so shocked <laughs> that he just came straight to the door and had a glass of water and the kid was like <laughs> had questioned him about what did you just did well I just <laughs> I just landed and crashed the Mech 9. <laughs> well, I'm sure he said something different from that. But that was just incredible but hilarious at the same time. <laughs> I love that. So because of that, um, Iceman had saved him just again for his entire career by assigning him to the Top Gun School at Naval Air Station, North Island, which is at the north end of 
the Coronada Panchala in San Diego Bay. Yeah, so it's somewhere in San Diego for sure, just like the Miramar in the original film. And that's going to be his next assignment because he's going to be indeed the instructor for Top Gun. But Kane, but Hammer told Maverick that the end of the era of mannered fighter aircraft will soon be over for sure. So the Navy has been tasked with destroying an unsanctionized uranium enrichment plant before it becomes optional for sure. And it's being located in the underground bunker at the end of the canyon, which is being defended by surface to air missiles known as the SAMs, the GPS jammers, and all these uh, fifth generation uh, fighters, and also to join in with the older. F-14 Tomcats, which that happens to be indeed what Maverick had to write in, you know, with his best friend Goose, who was played by Anthony Edwards. Yeah, um, who's indeed, uh, who was indeed, of course, uh, part of the Braffshaw family that he had, which he still remembers the fate that he had when he was on the F-14 Tomcat. It was going out of control in a in a terrible spin and killed him. Blames himself for it. Um, I mean, Goose had a wife, played by Mick Ryan, and also has his son, who is indeed Bradley Bradshaw, who was soon to be nicknamed Wooster. Uh, before we get to him, yeah, we begin to see some archive footages of what happened at the time. So, Maverick had came there, and he went to this local bar, as he remembered, and that's where he met his former girlfriend, his love interest, uh, named Penny, Penelope Benjamin, who's played by Jennifer Connelly. So, She's a single mom, a bar owner, yeah, basically a waitress at this time, or so, but she also has a daughter of the Amaral. So, she just goes around, you know, <laughs> greeting all the patrons around and all the rest of the students at Top Gun, so they hang around, having the best time of their lives, I don't remember how what what Maverick had uh, back in the day, you know, it's, especially when he spotted uh, Bradley Bradshaw um, Rooster. That's his nickname. Uh, that's played by Miles Teller, who is of course the FA 18E pilot in the mission training group. So that's where it resembles. He was just having a beer, and then he got kicked out because he was going to probably pay for all this. <laughs> and I know they just they just ring the, the cowbell, and no. <laughs> uh, that was just funny. Okay. So anyway, uh, Maverick Duff fights his skeptical students and prevails in every contest, winning their respects. So both... Um, Jake Servison, nicknamed Heyman, who's played by Glenn Powell, and joining in with Rooster, who suddenly clashes, which Rooster dislikes Heyman's caviar attitude, while Heyman criticizes uh, Rooster's cautious flying, which at this point on, I mean, this is where Maverick was hoping that he won't make this mistake again. That's why he's trying to protect them, because he wasn't really ready yet. And that's where it had a, a battle conflict, for sure. But he also reveals that he promised Rooster's uh, dying mom, as we all know, um, who was played by Meg Ryan, that Rooster would not become a pilot. And he's underwear by his promises that 
he actually resents Madara for dropping his naval academy application. Pending his military career and blames him for his father's death, which is Goose. Maverick is being relented to further inferior with Rooster's career for sure, and then for his alternative, he decided to send him to an extremely dangerous mission. So, um, the rest of the students that we have in this course, uh, we got. Lieutenant Natasha Trace, nicknamed Phoenix, played by Monica Barbaro. We have um, R RADM Solomon Bates, known as Warlock, played by Charles Purnell, who, of course, um, is the commander of the Naval Aviation Warfighting Development Center. And um, we also have uh, Vice Admiral Bo Simpson, nicknamed Cyclone, played by John Hamm, is the commander of the Naval Air Force that he's going to be able to, you know, hire uh, Maverick, how to teach him to do everything, what he could, and so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, back to the students, we also got Lieutenant Ruben Fitch, nicknamed Payback, played by Jay Elias, uh, Lieutenant uh, Mickey Garcia, nicknamed Fanboy, played by Danny Ramirez, um, Lieutenant J.V. Machado, nicknamed Coyote, played by great Tarzan Davis, uh, Lieutenant Billy Frizz uh, Avalon, yes, nicknamed Frizz, played by Manny Jacinto, Lieutenant Logan Lee, known as Yale, Yes, as in Yale University, played by Raymond Lee, Lieutenant uh, Bridgeham Lennox, known as Harvard, <laughs> what do you know, other university, <laughs> played by Jake Pinkin, um, Lieutenant Neil uh, Bikander, known as Omaha, played by Jack Schumacher, and Lieutenant Kaylee Bassett, known as Halo, yes, like Halo, the video game, or Halo yeah, Angel. Uh, played by Carol Wan. And yes, they're all uh, pilot and mission candidates for sure. Because they're going to be ready for their next dangerous mission that's going to really affect everyone. But they have to practice to get better. So, yes, um, the entire Naval Academy had just started to strap in on all these FA 18E. Uh, jet aviations and they're going up in the air making all these uh, particular moves and stunts around you know flipping around and doing all these crazy um, angle uh, all these uh, vertical angle shots that they have that you can see because uh, you can see all these close-up shots uh, all widely through all these multiple camera shots that you can see here and there and the way they really push the limits with all these jets. I mean, it's, it's just, wow. Just amazing how they, they can do all this stuff. And also, they're practicing targeting you know, the enemy. And they're, they're shooting all these missiles for sure. It's part of target practice. But they have to do all this stuff so they can get ready. But then, one of the pilots um, ends up um, getting scared a little bit. Or sometimes they feel like they can't breathe the mask you know see they wear their helmets and they have their call names so all right but they have trouble and when they're trying to go all the way up in the air up in the sky as high as they can but then it's going to really affect you so much that well that's exactly what happened um before in the original too with uh one pilot so yeah that's what they've been doing um and then um, this is where Iceman had contact Madrick, telling about what's happening in the past, and he's, he advised them that it's time to let go, and reassures him that both the Navy and Rooster needs Madrick for sure. And this is a very sad moment right there. When we got to see Iceman, 
Now, just so you know, folks, Val Kimmer has been going through ongoing uh, surgery and he because he has throat cancer all this time. He was trying to recover from all of it. So his voice has been affecting him so bad that this is why he's not sounding exactly what he used to be. And at that point on, they did, they did actually dubbed his voice. Um, they found a way to uh, use a uh, different uh, voice software that they use to actually, um, yeah, like they, they probably use ADR too. So they actually tried to uh, level his voice so it sounds exactly alike. So, I'm glad they had to write this in for his character because we want to be able to see him one last time. And when I saw that scene, I, I thought, wow, this was very touching. Having to see Madrick, you know, talking to Iceman while he was typing, you know, through the computer, you know, his laptop, he was typing all these words, telling them about that. And when he's making contact, later we get to hear his, his voice. And then, next thing you know, he passed away. Very sad. Uh, we also found out he has a wife uh, named Sarah, played by Jean Louisa Kelly. It was nice to see her again. I haven't seen her in years. Uh, I, so this was really great to see her. And she was a little older now. So, after that, Cyclone removes Madrick as instructor following the training incident in which the FA-18F is lost. And he relaxes the mission perimeters so they easily to execute but makes an escape much more difficult than ever before because now, during his announcement, Ma Madrick decided that he makes an unauthorized flight through the course with his preferred parameters that he was doing, providing everything could be done for sure. And now Cyclone had appointed him as team leader, so now he's going to lead the charge with the rest of the students, and then they're going to end up going all the way straight to the cannon, so they're going to go after the enemies that are being protected around. But it's not going to be an easy task, because there's going to be a lot of missiles uh, launching there's going to be a lot of shooting going around, and I know with these jets that they have around, they do have unlocked missiles that they're ready to fire whenever they target um, the enemy. So, which this was crazy because at this point on, Maverick was hit, and also joining in with Rooster, because now... They're all alone. They they suddenly crash straight into uh, somewhere in in the uh, the the icy mountains around. I think the Ever Everglades for sure. I mean, I'm glad they survived too. I mean, particularly Madrick because he crashed all the way down. Like I was afraid he was going to die too. Again. <laughs> But um, they're safe, but they end up finding the um, this one jet aviation, and it was it was the F-14 that they stole because there's two revenues around, and there's a lot of the other soldiers around that are protecting it, and then they're, and now both uh, Rooster and Maverick are on that. F-14, they stole it, and they just run off, but then they're being attacked by those two revenues. They're being attacked for sure, and they're going to find a way to, to stop them. And then, um, Heyman arrived <laughs> on the scene and finally saved their lives. Because they're already being shot down by all these SAMs around, and and they ejected too, and, and all this that was going around, all this... You know, they're being attacked all the way. Um, they finally landed uh, straight into the, the USS Abraham Lincoln uh, ship. Yeah, where they landed all the uh, 
all these jet aviation planes, you know, it could be the F-14, it could be, you know, all of the, um, the F-A-18E or any other kind, and they made it safe and sound. So now both uh, Rooster and Maverick had survived, and everyone else had cheered. <laughs> so I'm happy. Uh, later on, Rooster had helped Maverick work on his P-51 Mustang. Yes, he has this one classic uh, aviation plane. And then later, Rooster took a photo of his mission success. And that's where he pins uh, alongside the photo of his late father and, of course, Maverick's best friend, Goose. And now we get to see... Um, both Mad Rick along with Penny and and we also got <laughs> a young Mad Rick <laughs> to join. Yeah another kid uh, to fly off in the P fifty one Mustang and they're all the way off. <laughs> okay. And what a dogfight this turned out to be. I mean, it's it's just incredible. And yes, uh, this is indeed an awesome sequel that we ever have been waited for for so long. And wow. Um, Tom Cruise, once again, is as magnificent as he ever was in the original. And he still is to this day. And he's even more stronger than ever. <laughs> And I'm just happy that he finally got to do what, whatever he can. And it made it work. And if anything, man, please give him an Oscar. Come on. His performance is terrific. Because already, um, it just got nominated recently for six awards. At the 95 Academy Awards that's going to be held off on March 12, 2023. And already it just won Best Film for the National Board of Review. Um, I'm not so sure if it had won some. And I think it also had received a lot too. Uh, numerous awards. Um, I think it did receive some Golden Globes too. I hope so. But I'm glad to hear that it's already become a huge success. I mean, it, it became... For its 170 million budget, I mean, the original film was like 16 million, but this one had a much stronger budget. You know, having to deal with um, delays and everything that was going around, it was just wow. They worked so hard, and now it's already up to one, yeah, 1,489 billion. A lot bigger and better than ever to make that amount of money uh, unfortunately though it's up against uh, the new avatar sequel the way of water so it's already taken its uh, its status but still um, between that it's still a strong movie for sure it has comedy elements in there but it also has dramatic moments even some conflicted scenes, uh, the flashback scenes where we saw these archive footages of, which I know they're all grainy too. You can still see the film grain, even though the whole film is shot digitally. Uh, where you go back to the original film, how Maverick remembers a goose and how they had a great time to get her until his fate, and then we got to see Meg Ryan, and then we got to see Rooster when he was a kid. Yeah, and also remember the times too when, when Goose was singing the, the song the "Great Balls of Fire" by Jared Lee Lewis. <laughs> yeah, all all this um, particular times that was going around. Um, it has an incredible soundtrack though, and yes, I was even amazed that they even got to still play. The Harold Faltermeyer score at the beginning. So I knew they were going to bring back its old theme. And then later they also uh, mix in with 
Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins, so they brought that song back. Uh, so that was really nice. Um, and just like the original movie, there's also a volleyball scene too. Uh, which this time, it's at the beach. So it's like, it's basically beach volleyball where you have Maderick hanging around with the students, you know, just, you know, throwing in the volleyballs and just having fun. <laughs> just like how he remembers it. Um, and then, um, the rest of the students are just incredible, too. I mean, I know they're all going to be memorable. Um, well, especially Monica Barbaro, too. It's great that they got a female to be part of this, too. I mean, we hardly, when it comes to uh, the original film, it was mostly male that always ends up on, on the air. But I'm glad they got, you know, some females to join. And I got to say, you know, Monica Barbaro is just incredible, too in her performance. She looks a little bit like Rosa Zalazar in Alita Battle Angel or any other movie that she's been in. And wow, I, I couldn't believe she looks almost alike. <laughs> I mean, she's beautiful. And and all the other guys, you know, they, they do act macho and cocky and all. <laughs> and then there are other guys too that are you know, they have their own personality, too, as we speak, and, and the way they, they have their own call names, so they do remember by. And it got some tremendous dialogue, too, uh, some great writing coming from Christopher McQuarrie, joining in with Eric Kruger, yeah, Aaron Kruger and Eric Warren Singer around. And, um... They took a lot of time, you know, getting this approved, so I'm glad they did. And having to shoot this with multiple cameras is just, as I mentioned already, it's just breathtaking how they did it. It was nice to see all these pilots around, all in wide angle shots here and there, and how it switches all these aspect ratios from being in scope to, to full frame right there. Trying to match the IMAX scenes. And the 4K does a lot of justice right here. And I love the chemistry between Madrick and Penny. Probably a lot better than the chemistry they had uh, between Madrick and Charlie Bradward, uh, Blackwood in, in the original film, with, who, of course, Kaylin McGillis had played. I mean, and I know there was a funny moment in the movie, too, where he was making love, uh, hanging around at at her house, and then suddenly her daughter spotted him. <laughs> kind of like, you know, kind of like how teenage love occurs. Like, you'll just go upstairs or just go all the way up on the ladder, go up on, on top of, of the bedroom and just start making love. <laughs> and I... Try to make sure, you know, you don't get caught. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> that was just funny. And I, I actually love the love. And the love is, a, the love story is even better. Uh, all filmed and photographed right away. Better than ever. And a great cast to join. I mean, it's also great to see Ed Harris again. I hardly see Ed Harris in a movie nowadays in recent years. But it's nice to see him. And um, and so is uh, Belle Kilmer. I mean, it was great to see him reprise his role. I mean, this, despite of his condition. I mean, but hey, I was glad that at least he took the, the risk to play the role again. In spite of that. Um, and of course, wonderful shots. Incredible special effects that they did. They did a lot of uh, energy. And they had worked so hard doing all this. They do everything they can not to duplicate the original. But nevertheless, have everything with all the latest technology they use. You know, wind tunnels, uh, computer modeling. So they use some CGI, but... The rest seems more practical than ever before. So they must have had to brace all of that, all that work. And also, 
the takes on other aircrafts like the Dark Star, I mean, or any of the F 14s, the and every every jet around that they have are, are all done exactly as they planned. So they this is not so this is not one of those oh I I'm just gonna use like just all these uh, jets around all in CGI where everything's just shot on a green screen for sure. No, they wouldn't do that. No, they did use real jets. They use a lot of real jets to put it together and and they just had everything around and and they do everything they can to be careful but then they also have other replacements here they even built them so if you're gonna have shots like this you know crashing and having a missile hitting hitting the planes and all all these brutal attack uh, all these attacks going around well not brutally but almost but all of this going around I mean Especially when you have to see it up in the air. I mean, with these vertical angle shots here and there. When you see the pilots are just inside the jets. Um, you know, with the glass shield around. And everything you see in and out. Going straight through the mountains, cliffs. All around. <laughs> okay, I, okay. I, I know, I'm, I'm talking all the way through. And the video is getting longer, too. <laughs> But they have used like over 700 VFX shots, and they're all created by four studios. Uh, Method Studios, uh, MPC, Lola BFX, and Blind Limited. Uh, they all were together, and they they did the previs by Intelligence Species. Yeah, yeah they used the, the previs to see how this will go. The production ESF supervisors... Like Ryan the Top Hope, who coordinated the irrigation of various VFX uh, components that are used in the film, for sure, and any other. The soundtrack in the movie, well, compared to the soundtrack of the original, yes, you still get some of the original songs, as we know. But there's also something new, too. Like, we got Lady Gaga, who, um, we also got uh, Run Republic, and Hans Simber. Uh, to join in with Harold Faltermeyer to reprise his uh, composition. So now they're all together to create some of the best soundtracks they'll ever have. Like we got the song Hold My Hand by Lady Gaga, I Ain't Worried by One Republic, the, the Top Gun anthem that uh, Howard Faltermeyer had composed. Which also had Giorgio Mobiter, which at this rate we got Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins. <laughs> they had a lot of work that they'd done too for location. I gotta say, thank Tom Cruise for finally, finally putting this all together because he wasn't so sure if he was gonna do this movie, but he put a lot of work and effort for it, and I'm very proud of him for doing it. And Joseph Krasinski's direction is phenomenal for sure, and it will always be remembered by. It's definitely the best sequel of 2022, but it's the best sequel ever made. So, can't go wrong. So that's Top Gun Maverick, and I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Get ready to soar all the way into new heights for sure. <laughs>